How's it going, everyone? I'm Honan. I'm one of them. And this is the K-Pop Podcast. And you want to go ahead and kind of take it away about the topics we will cover today? Yeah, so we'll do the news as usual. We'll um we'll, we'll do some follow-ups on what we talked about last time. Uh, and then we'll hit a couple of new topics as well. And then kind of lead, lead us into like the the main topic we'll do today. We still haven't got... This man caught up to Queendom Puzzle yet. No, I've so. not finished uh, the puzzle episodes, no. But um, hopefully come the next episode, you'll have a couple more under your belt. We'll have more to talk about for now, that. I, now I can watch them during all the lives because we finished uh, Second World, so. Yeah, which is a great show, incidentally. It was, yes. I Good was show. not happy about the elimination part. No, it was it. very unnecessary. Because yeah. Yeah, it added nothing to the show and it was like jtbc trying to be an eminent yeah and it, it was like right near the end as well it was like it felt very yeah yeah awful. and they and they got like shaft because it's right before it, the like the camping trip that they all <laughs> yeah get to have with each other it's like oh okay so they just got screwed like yeah hmm. but anyway good show um yeah so i guess the the first uh news thing is just it's very brief there's not really anything to talk about this substantially, but it, we talked about the Jungkook uh, plagiarism scandal from the Fing Kale Finkel uh, composer, and now he himself is getting done for plagiarizing from the Spice Girls of all people for a Finkel song that came like two years after a Spice Girls song, and everyone's like, "Well, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> doesn't this sound like this?" And now he's gone uh, gone quiet. <laughs> so I guess that's I guess that's that. But uh, it was just a pretty funny. Uh, the pretty man who funny. threw the accusations had plagiarism accusations. That's yeah, some, some, something about glass houses and stones. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, you know. Um, but either way, I think it's because um, these kinds of things have been happening fairly. It's been more common. It feels like lately that there's been plagiarism. I mean, there's there was plagiarism accusation for Cupid, right? Well, there's like, twelve notes, you know, and you'll yeah. come across uh, similar sounding musical patterns in drums and guitar and stuff yeah and... but it, it would be good if there was a more easily like solvable well, not solvable just like a channel that people can go through to easily like resolve disputes rather than having to go into the press and get all messy you know mm. we like because the problem before, like, yeah if, if there was like a system of if it was found liable just having like a monetizable like solution to just being like well screw you you plagiarized and getting rid of like the song and everything like that yeah, yeah. And lawsuits and everything else yeah and just yeah just the way like because we talked about how hyde just like refused to meet with the guy <laughs> and it's like then it goes to the press and then it gets messy and it's like there should just be like a kind of easy you know Reg- not regulatory body but some kind of impartial mediation that you can get and just say hey i think they plagiarized this can you check it confirm if i have a case or whatever and then just that's that yeah uh, but uh, yeah i made it worse because just... they they were just like not acknowledging his existence basically yeah didn't help but yeah, that's that's that um and then i guess the big one is uh 50 50 of course we always have to talk about them but this might be kind of a f- not a final but it might be the last we hear for for a while um so they lost the case is the the headline that they, they the court uh said that they didn't have sufficient evidence to um to justify trying to terminate lost, their contract their lawsuit, yes so um so yeah so that's, that's it's kind of done uh obviously they immediately filed an appeal uh, against the verdict, but unless they're able to produce more evidence, um, I don't think it's going to make a difference. And their lawyer said that um, they're now going to be, they were like, well, we're not done. We're like, we're now going to be steering the focus of our like legal charges towards uh, the givers instead, which I think is hilarious because it's like, they're, it feels like they're the ones who kind of initiated the whole thing in the first place anyway. So yeah. now so they're turning the on him. Get the bill attract won the lawsuit and then i'm just trying to think of because i think i saw a thing right the attract ceo basically said okay i want them to come back still yeah 
Yeah, so he's in like this position where he could uh, like make them liable for all of the damages and stuff like that. And like people were bringing up the numbers that that he could, in theory, that attracts could in theory um, bill the fifty fifty members for because you can do like something of like average revenue times the number of years, whatever, because the revenue from Cupid was so high that its numbers are really big. And they're talking, you know, they could be billed for tens of millions of US dollars. Yeah. Um, but the dude's saying, I don't want to do any of that. I just want them to come back to the company so we can <laughs> continue doing the group stuff. And I, I feel obviously that um, the ship has sailed, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't I, really I, see publicly how it could work now. Yeah, no. Um, I do hope for the girl's sake that he doesn't... Uh, do the opposite and and you know take them for every penny that they're worth because obviously that's not a great thing on his part either. Mm -mm. Um, you so think I guess he's gonna do the the, uh, the brave sound route and like just fully re redo the group basically instead of those. Oh, the thing is, like, one of the things that yeah. made their sound unique was the members it had having very distinct like tones. Yeah. And I, I feel like especially the like the tone of Cupid at the start of it has got such a like she has such a distinctive singing voice. It's yeah, I, I don't know. I guess we'll find out um when the when the appeal is done. I don't know when when that's supposed to happen. But I don't know. It's um it's I don't know, it's it's rough. I think we, we already kind of said what what we think about the whole case as a thing, but and I think we both kind of expected that the case was gonna get thrown out. Mm. Um and now that it's kind of reached that stage, I don't know. I do wonder if there are any regrets from <laughs> the members' side or I definitely think they what. regret it for sure because they let their parents and the givers like initiate what it's a lawsuit in hindsight that just doesn't really make sense in my opinion at the timing it happened and like the purpose obviously too the courts didn't think so either like yeah they looked at it and yeah. were like um <laughs> I don't, like, i'm not really sure what you're going for here. and and what what is worth bearing in mind is that we have seen obviously recently situations where an initial appeal even just for suspension was rejected, but then later was granted, which is what happened with um, some of the Luna members, right? Like some of them got got their suspended right away, and then the others had to kind of go through the appeal process and get it done after that. So it's still possible, of course, that the that um, the courts will, in in the end, realize or, or come to some understanding that that there's no point trying to force them into the staying in the contract when they're not going to work. Mm. Um, and then they can find some kind of settlement or just enforce some kind of uh, agreed settlement. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see on that. I don't think I can't really speculate on that. I guess, like, um, the court of public opinion is just over for 50 yeah. 50. I don't yeah, see yeah. any way back from that, really. Like, yeah, uh, they themselves have said. They themselves have said, like, oh, we're happy to have given up a career of singers in order to not be into that company. So God, clearly, clearly they feel very strongly about something, but there doesn't seem like there's I, enough I, of Wouldn't there have been, like, I just feel like was. there would have been stronger evidence if it was that bad, right? You think so, yeah. I, maybe not. I mean, I can imagine a case where there's just that's actually happened but there's just not enough like visual evidence of it or something you know oh, yeah like that does happen but it just seems like when it's happened before there's so much evidence it's for other like a, groups yeah, that have been successfully doing the lawsuits right like and yeah it's yeah, it's it's stuff yeah like chu must have had receipts going out of the forever yeah but... <laughs> exactly and when she did like we saw we saw barely a fraction of what she had um, and even also in the news, it's like Omega X are going to come forward to like pr press charges against their former company, with, and they've got all kinds of evidence lined up. And they're just going to kind of gradually trickle that out and stuff. It's like, well, yeah, uh, um, yeah, yeah, it's hard to it's hard to read. Uh, maybe they just had really high standards and didn't expect to get the same kind of idle treatment and unfortunately that everyone's being everyone's but obviously that doesn't make it mean that it's good treatment 
Mm. But you know. yeah, I mean, they were on a small label, so it's not crazy to imagine they didn't get anywhere near like the kind of treatment you get in a Hybe or SM or like JYP. Yeah, or something like that. Like I'm sure there was difficulties for sure being from like a really small brand new company especially you can tell their ceo doesn't really know what he's doing (laughs) (laughs) like so i can imagine there was very frustrating elements he does seem rather clueless yeah Mm -hmm. um but it's it's certainly still you know part of this whole thing about um contract law and idols taking all things into their own hands and also like familial involvement because there was a story um the other day about the guy who placed first on fantasy boys which is a show similar to my teenage girl which is a show that formed classy which sonia is in which was on the second half there you go there's a there's a link so it's like the boy group equivalent um the guy who plays first is like dropping he's like he's not going to debut because he wasn't happy with his contract or he he had he was making well he was said that he was like making demands like specifically his mom was making a lot of demands his mom was really heavily involved in everything including like what clothes he was wearing what center time he was getting and all this kind of shit um and obviously the company eventually said look we're not going to give you everything that you're asking for and he said right well i'm out and and uh seems to be like a little bit of a thread going on (laughs) yeah um and and we saw some stuff about like the money and the contract and stuff and the money that they were expected to pay and things and some of it obviously does seem kind of unreasonable like you know they're owing eight million one here 16 million one here for different things that it's like well should should they really be the ones who are having to cover that um maybe that there, there is you know obviously there are unfair things in k-pop contracts and that should uh, be challenged um so that but this kind of thing is certainly a precedent's been set that people can take their contracts to court if they so if they see fit, um, and sometimes it seems like that's uh, working. So that certainly might result in some positive changes in favor of the artists going forward. One can hope. Well, Possibly yeah, when you look at the Luna one, you definitely see there can be positive versions of this happening, and then I think fifty yeah. fifty is just like the worst example now yeah. of, of like what is not the good example of of yeah it's of these court cases yeah um unfortunately i was uh i think we me and you both had like really high hopes for 50 50 but i just don't even know what happens with that now no i think it's just over for them unfortunately and well like i think it's just over for attract and that name as well too like i don't really yeah see even if they tried to redo it i don't really see how they could no it probably he'll just uh, do what he did before and just start a new company with a different name and do the same thing again how is he starting so many companies that's what i don't get guess an investment right that's when he's just someone to trust him yeah. and the people in korea trust him so that's kind of all that matters really like people will trust him to um to do another group i guess maybe mm. we'll It'll be interesting to see we'll see yeah and i guess the other piece of news that is worth talking about there's a couple other things but i don't think um some guy from a group that hasn't properly debuted yet having a photo kissing a girl is that big a deal no um, i mean who would think <laughs> <laughs> but uh but we'll talk about bang chan um so we we talked about this a while ago when it was happening, right? That when Stray Kids had, uh, when Bang Chan specifically had said that Stray Kids were at some uh, event in Paris, and one of the other groups there was rude to them or didn't greet them properly. When he did the the live, and then he yeah. talked about that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the live that he did that was part of his like weekly stream, like he always did his they were called Chan's Room, which is funny because Bang is Korean for room, so it's mm. like Chan's Bang, Chan's Room, mm-hmm. great stuff, He's saying you know. In reverse, yeah, yeah. Com- comedy goal um but as so he'd done these like week after week like almost without fail for like three years straight or something which is pretty impressive given how you know mm, he's live streaming hectic, every hectically week that busy long. you know you, you, that man is um but after that one with all of the with everything that kind of happened as a result uh he hasn't done one since um and this got brought up in a in a fan sign that they were doing by a fan 
who just shamelessly illegally recorded their conversation, something that you are expressly forbidden from doing, but they just did anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, in which he said, uh, I can't do them anymore. I, I want to do them, but company says no. Um, obviously, the result from that was uh, a lot of outcry and mm, uh, like backlash. Because JYP said, don't do that, basically. Supposedly, yeah. Mm. So uh, a lot of a lot of uh, flack towards uh, Stray Kids division, like the JYP division that manages them and JYP. And I so can on. understand the company after that kind of being like, maybe uh, let's not or something, you know, just like. But it's also not good because yeah. it's, I think one of the things that makes them so accessible and popular is like how often uh, the leader from Stray Kids, Bang Chen, is always talking. Yeah, to international fans, I guess you would say. Yeah, it's definitely yeah, for like international fans. I think more than anything, those lives, like, because I feel like that's yeah. the big bread and butter of straight kids is like the international fan base. Oh yeah, for sure, and and it was like a nice thing for obviously yeah, like you say, for them to do stuff with him, like and interact with him and have those. Um, and he he would interact with them in terms of like engaging with their content and stuff. Like he would watch like fan videos or mm. like he would do like reactions to songs and stuff with them and, and stuff like that and it was just like a kind of you know nice it's not not dissimilar from the streams you do except you know you're you know you're not bang exactly <laughs> I, i'm not bang what's the big difference um, yeah but uh obviously for, we'll recap obviously what happened after that one so uh a stay made a tiktok essentially in which they said that the group must have been Ive, that it couldn't have been any other group uh, mm. that he was referring to. It must be Ive. Um, and obviously, as a result, stays were just dogpiling all over um, Ive, and especially going onto One Young's Instagram and just, you know, leaving all these horrible hate comments and shit about her. Um, you know, people are doing the classic thing that they always do of like taking that one, yeah. like one clip where they don't look like they're smiling and they're like, look how rude they are. And, Even though there's like a clip of like two seconds before yeah, where they're all like, yeah, you know, smiling. Exactly. So it's, I know. Yeah. The, that's what I meant by understanding the company's point of view. Of yeah. It, was yeah. like, they probably see that and go, oh man, that's like, that's bad <laughs> or whatever, you know? And they're like, we need to kind of get away from some of that. But yeah. But it's also bad because it's like you don't want an artist restricted for any reason from doing something they yeah, want to do. If, if he wants to do those lives, he should be allowed to do them. Like, it's... Yeah, I, I think if JRP did um, just straight up ban him from doing them, that's probably a bit of an overreaction. Yeah. Um, and I think, um, and what kind of annoys me, he... Um, he already made like a kind of apology about it around the time mm. that it happened. And said he, um, he didn't directly name but, anyone. But yeah, he said like, I didn't say anyone like, you know, but I always feel like the artists should take a stronger position in, in these kinds of situations, you know, um, to come and say like, oh, hey, fans, stop saying this, this shit to people like it's not nice like don't do this i don't want you to do this we the members don't want to read that kind of stuff like yeah. i appreciate your job you're trying to defend us but that's not how you do it i think and you that... should directly acknowledge who the fandom attacked and say yeah like, please yeah. do not like i wasn't talking about them specific like he should be very direct like that like, yeah yeah i mean even if he even if he was talking about them it doesn't mean you should be sending a exactly. dog yeah. them, right so but i think it would be uh, good if he even if he was yeah. speaking about them to directly say i wasn't yeah please don't attack yeah, I, but, them online and things like that and stuff yeah i i think that's how um it, those kind of things should be dealt with because you, you can get like an easily clippable point of the guy the idol themselves saying don't do this and you can just re like reply to hate comments that you see saying look the idol you like is saying telling you not to do this so mm -hmm. what kind of fan does it make you if you don't if you don't listen to them sure. um obviously that won't apply get through to everyone but you would imagine that it would go some way to helping i see obviously it's a bit late for that and i do wish that joip had taken that kind of action rather than just straight up banning, banning them forever him. well you know to be honest if it's if it's done and he doesn't get to do those anymore it's the fans fault yeah 
but then the downside it's, is it's, now it's, not, it's the fandom's fault if that if that not obviously not the good fans and there's a lot of good fans yeah, yeah, like, yeah, who yeah, don't, but it's it's those fans that went online and yeah, attacked that that made it happen this way you know um but now, then you have it coming back the other way now so of course you have dives responding by going to Banchan's Instagram and leaving horrible comments towards him. So it just, you know, it goes round and round. It's just playground shit. Um, Every fandom just has bad people in it. Like, yeah. There's, that's, but that's th this uh, kind of escalated a bit in that the classic, uh, now <laughs> classic re like resolution for everything, which is the protest truck, came out. And they straight up had, this, had the truck outside JYP saying, hey, like, continue Chinese room, like, let Chan do lives, that kind of thing. To which, um, JRP didn't respond, but, uh, but Chan himself did on Bubble, in which he said, basically, like, ha 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 ha, guys, it was, like, every, he's like, it's, um, he's like, no one forced me to do anything, everything is my decision, or something like that. Mm, so now he's, like, kind of flipped it around. So he's kind of, so what he, he said to the fan, maybe he said, Maybe he said it to kind of give her an un make her un give her like oh she'll understand if I say the company says no, hmm. or now he's saying he doesn't want to get into further trouble with the company because the company said hey you can't say shit about us when you're meeting fans either, <laughs> you know maybe he's in double trouble for doing that. Um, so I don't know. Um, obviously it's a it's an unfortunate situation for him. I think he probably could have just seen the potential consequences of his words anyway and, and dealt with them and then just kind of moved on. It's unfortunate because um, you know he's like a, a, a pretty cool, He's a good guy, like, you know. Good, good yeah. So it's, it's unfortunate that like it's uh, a scandal built around someone who really shouldn't be in one kind of thing, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. And obviously he didn't intend for that. He was just kind of telling an anecdote that he was mildly annoyed about and it wasn't meant to blow up obviously but there is that thing about you know idols do have responsibilities realize that anything they can say can get blown up um so they have to be very wary of their words and that unfortunately means sometimes you can't do um lives without a uh, proper censorship no, I, def I, I definitely think he regrets like oh uh, for sure yeah live, or whatever you know like in <laughs> hindsight i'm sure he's like damn i wish uh, i hadn't said that one you know? yeah <laughs> So uh, I, for one, I'm going to stoke the fires as much as possible by starting a Bang Shan One Young dating rumor. Uh, there you go. What's the age so... difference there? <laughs> I don't know. Like uh, she's not that old. I think like six or seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. Something like that. That's fine. It's not like that. Just, it's just like a that, song. Uh, <laughs> it was like that. Uh, some actress and director who are dating, and they're like, he's like 58 and she's like 24, or something. I was like, yeah, yikes for me. Yeah, all right. Um, anyway, <laughs> that's a huge <laughs> gap. That's, that's that's a big one. But, but yeah, I hope uh, I hope obviously Shen can come back and do like at some point. I, it'd be great to just kind of have them, Ivan and Stray Kids, come out together and be like, guys, stop. Mm -hmm. Even if it, it would, what would be great is if it was Ive that he was talking about. If I've come out with them and say, yeah let's clarify the situation like some shit was going on and we didn't know what we were, like we were distracted we didn't we didn't realize it's too late whatever whatever the situation was clarify it say that make their amends mm. show everything's good and then move on i don't know i Obviously, think you've seen things a little too grass well, is greener but... on the other side i am <laughs> i'm trying to remain i, I don't foresee that happening in uh no, it won't. um no. i do think it, it would be great if both fandoms just acknowledge the a wong young gets a lot of ridiculous hate and just stops you know and then for yeah. the other side like just realize hey bang chen's a cool person like stop as well you know both yeah. fandoms yeah. are just kind of like yo these are both chill people like let's it's ridiculous yeah yeah um and then yeah when when things do get too excessive i guess you have uh companies do companies are taking steps to uh protect their artists and whatnot because we had william uh, putting out a statement in order to protect Unbi, who of course has been making plenty of uh, headlines for her uh, performances and stuff at uh, Waterbomb and similar festivals and things like that. Festival, yes. It's pretty yeah. funny of all the things, because the, so many banger albums and awesome songs, and then the big boost is the Waterbomb Festival. 
Yeah. So basically, uh, obviously, like, Umbi is a confident woman and with good reason. Hmm. Uh, and that, that itself isn't the problem. But obviously, people were, um, were taking their responses to it too far and uh, being just straight up vulgar and crude and just saying and starting to, you know, take slow motion footage and People whatever take it too far as they always well, going do. going way 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 too far yeah so william basically came out and said look we're aware of these these kinds of posts we're collecting evidence regarding this um we will take legal action on any malicious content that we find moving forward please uh to the fans please email anything that you think is over the line send it to us and we're gonna press charges if we can um which i think is a a nice kind of gesture from William, I think it would, I don't think they would actually have much legal grounds for most of these things. That's a response for sure, but how are yeah. you going to do it? Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I do just appreciate the the effort being made by a company to protect mm. the artist from, you know, creepy. Yeah, like a Cube Entertainment would just pretend online. it's not happening or something. <laughs> yeah, or or as in the case of, uh, of C9 Entertainment, they would actively encourage it. <laughs> which uh, kind of sets us up into the main topic that we're going to talk about. This one's... When you originally told me the story, I thought in my, the kind of mindset of like, oh, that show's messed up. It's really messed up. The hosts were like that. And then when you add that extra factor of the company like pre-approves the program, that just makes it so much worse. Yeah. Because then yeah. where's the support? for the idol member yeah quite that's that's hilarious because the word g1 means support so, <laughs> i did not know um, i was not playing yeah. in any kind of... no but yeah so for those who don't know obviously see, see, this is about signature group that's right near and dear to my heart um and hilariously has actually kind of given them some headlines and exposure outside of the normal uh nugu sphere that they operate within which i guess is a positive thing in a way um, and that's clearly what the company's been going for. Um, so in a similar vein to Unbi, um, G1 is a well-endowed woman. Mm. And uh, she's been the subject kind of on the low of similar kind of things to Unbi. But obviously, because Unbi is a much bigger name, um, they were, it was much more vociferous. So it became much more notable and well-known more easily. But G1 was also having the same kind of thing. And it seemed that someone at C9 was looking at the situation with Umbi and going, well, hey, like Umbi's making all kinds of headlines here, mm -hmm. uh, getting a lot of uh, popularity because of it. So why don't we, we have a member who can do the same kind of thing. So why don't we start pushing her in that way as well? And suddenly G1's wearing much more revealing outfits. Uh, she's like, it's, yeah, it was but a the clear- the factor there though, did they not acknowledge that Umbi is like already popular like i would say like sure like already obviously for my's one and then also i would say like her solo music is there's some like really still some popular music there on its own merit right like not just for, yeah like, something like yeah water but, bomb like but i mean it, it was a really big trending topic here like i i think um perhaps the perception from the international side is probably different to how it is in korea but i think her, her name didn't was didn't wasn't carrying as much weight in Korea as it was as it used to uh and these kinds of things were really like making her name some of the first thing you'd see whenever you looked at Melon or Naver or yeah. whatever like well she right got a there. win on a music show and stuff I know that there was like factors yeah. of it where people were like oh that really worked out it like really it. helped it's yeah. unf it's unfortunate because for someone like us who's listened for a while now to the whole catalog and then acknowledged how good the music is especially some of the b-sides and stuff yeah like, for sure it's, it's unfortunate like that has to be one of the things that's, that's the thing that does it yeah. yeah um but yeah but the, i think that the, the thing is the, the the difference from what it seems is that envy is quite open to being you know confident about herself yeah and she's fine with that. She's like, I don't, I don't imagine anyone at Willem is saying, "Hey, wear this like bikini or whatever and go out on water bomb." I imagine she's saying, "Oh, great, I'd love to do water bomb and go out like this." And like, 
obviously that's not to say it's that she enjoys difference. getting horrible comments, but yeah. she's definitely in a position where she's more comfortable doing that kind of thing. But um, yeah, so it gets to the the thing that kind of kicked this mate this off. Um, G One went on a show led by uh, Tak Jae Hoon, who's an old old singer. Um, where, where the kind of the concept of the show is like a you know man without filter kind of thing. It, it's meant to be like a, oh these guys are shocking. They'll say the stuff that other interviewers won't. Shock say. shock kind humor of, like kind of you know yeah, yeah, that yeah. kind of that kind of shit. Um, okay, so obviously in order going on that kind of show, as with any situation, whenever an idol goes on any show, the company will, will pre vet the script uh, or at least probably even co write the script or you know. They make sure what things are it. said and not said. They, yeah, they, yeah. they know what's going to be said. Uh, they might not tell the idol themselves what's going to be said, but the company knows, and they won't let things that they don't want to be said be said. Um, sure. That's the way it always is, right? Like you, that's why you don't get idols getting asked about their dating rumors or whatever mm -hmm. when they go on shows, right? They're, they're um, problematic, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the the dudes like straight up say like, oh, like you're you're popular in, in like male communities because of your physique mm -hmm. uh, and not only that but they straight up start pulling shots like so, like individual images from like her fat cams of oh like her, her and like where anytime anything is like looking more revealing or whatever and saying like the guy holds it up and he's like it's a shame that, th that this isn't a gif or whatever and she looks like she looks actively uncomfortable of course. like she like puts her hands across her chest which is like any body language expert will tell you that that is a very guarded <laughs> gesture how could and, like, how would you not be uncomfortable in that situation like that's, yeah, i don't that's... know what i don't know what response they were trying to get from mm -hmm. her really um and they say like as someone on the in the show they said like oh like unbi has been they literally name drop Unbi and say that she's been getting really popular for this kind of thing. So are you trying to make get the same concept or whatever? And and poor G1, who's like one of the sweetest people you'll ever meet, right? Is like just doesn't really know how to respond to this. And she's she does her best to kind of you know media it out and and start it out and keep smiling and whatever. But like you can tell that she's not uh, wasn't feeling great. Yeah, about you showed it. me that clip, and it's a very uncomfortable clip to watch yeah. you could tell th that it was not an expectation for for g1 yeah. at all in that interview and that you know the the look was instantly just kind of like why am i what, being asked what is happening this? yeah did almost like she's looking around for like the company someone or someone involved yeah she almost like, like look at the stuff and like bro are yeah, you yeah, real yeah, like it's... this is happening um, and yeah, and that, that's the thing that really, really gets to me is that that someone at C9 thought, hey, this will be a good idea. This will get us some some publicity. And yeah. what's even perhaps more annoying is that they were right because it did. <laughs> it absolutely did get them uh, more publicity. Like it was making headlines on on sites uh, and news here that you it wouldn't the signature wouldn't be getting. It's kind otherwise. of the old TMZ viewpoint of like, there's no bad right press. Right. Anything is going to put your name in the media is is gonna make you more popular kind of idea i get that yeah but i don't think it works in k-pop that way to be honest no i think bad publicity can permanently damage yeah. your reputation i think, I think unlike Korea, most yeah. medias in like the west or something where it almost has this mindset of like oh yeah it's just good to have your name there or something yeah doesn't yeah. work in K-pop. I it's, just think that does it, not. <laughs> it's especially if you're a woman. I mm -hmm. think. I think men you can can get get over or get by uh, scandals a lot more reliably. It depends on the scandal, obviously, but certain things they can get by on a lot more easily. Uh, obviously, this is not a scandal. G1 has not done anything wrong. Um, <laughs> but no, um, no, and and her and her response was like perfectly well mannered and, and whatever. Like people were commending her for how she how she dealt with the situation but obviously um as like i know her well and i felt bad for her but for, fortunately i was in the position as of a couple hours ago to straight to talk to her face to face and straight up say to her hey uh are you okay <laughs> and that's why i said to her. i said I, I i was i said you know do you want are you okay she said 
yeah obviously did you think and i was like uh, she was like what well, she's like what do you mean and i said well i've seen like articles and comments and things and people saying like not nice stuff about you and she immediately knew what i was talking about <laughs> i could tell like the look of recognition and she was like oh you know don't worry about it i'm okay and i said to her i just said look we like you because you're you you know it's not about <laughs> anything else and mm. she was obviously gracious about that mm. uh, i didn't want to pry her too much and be yeah. like how so tell me how you felt being on that show right no, in that of moment, course you yeah know, you I, don't want to just be so um, direct, like direct about it yeah, yeah yeah especially because she's probably obligated to just say everything you know mm -hmm. it, it's fine yeah. but um yeah obviously i i hope that she is fine obviously uh She's got her homies around her <laughs> to in help the out. In the fan call, it's like such a cheerful person, like uh, yeah, and said like you know go like try and talk Bucky and all these <laughs> things, you know, it was like real, real like um. So it's kind of when when I heard this story, I was like kind of felt really let down that people were being so lame. I guess would be yeah, like you know it, like it was yeah. it was like because I think maybe. Because Signature is not such an overly well-known group, people don't know how cheerful and kind a certain member is or something, you know, and, like, yeah. of all the members... Obviously, you don't want it to happen to anyone, but of all the members, it's, like, really an unfortunate that anyone would treat them that Yeah, way. and she is very much, you know, like, the face of the group. Like, um, she's the only one who has been in the top 100 of the girl idol brand rankings and stuff like that. Mm. And... Um, yeah, but obviously, I, I hope that um, at least the name recognition will get a little higher, and people are gonna, you know, check out their um, the new uh, the new album and stuff. They're they're uh, well on their way to breaking their sales record for it, which is good. Obviously, it's a conflicting um, feeling, right? So you want them to be more popular, and you want good things to happen, but you don't want that to be the reason. Yeah, of course, it's like, and it's a weird feeling in that way. But some of the fans, I think, were um, reacting kind of or overreacting to. So, like today at the fan sign, um, there are a lot more middle-aged men there than there would have been before. And it's not to say that they don't have their own. They didn't have, you know, the uncle fans uh, already because they did. But there certainly were more. Um, and a lot of signatures fans, especially the hardcore fans, are like young, not young, I say young girls, girls in their kind of early mid 20s, um, who are young and attractive. And I think they really dislike, uh, they're the same kind of age as the members, right? And they dislike mm -hmm. being in that same environment where they feel like the men are just kind of lecherous and creepy because it feels like obviously not just towards the members but also perhaps to them as well um and i was sat there and like some of the the girl fan sites were uh, who i also follow on twitter were saying stuff like oh this fan sounds disgusting like it's full of these fucking gross men and stuff and some of them been just fighting like anonymously with uh with male fans and basically them saying i wish there weren't any any male fans um signatures should just be for girls <laughs> and mm. also some of it was like bizarrely directed towards foreigners as well i don't really know what that was about because we ain't done nothing but well okay no, that's not true because some of the big like twitter accounts sharing lots of like gross stuff about her are uh run by foreigners so maybe that's been a factor but um i see well yeah it's because of like yeah that makes sense when you kind of describe it like yeah. of course there'd be like foreign uh fan sites or something that would have upload yeah obviously. i mean and, and those and that you get it gets to those kinds of big communities where this they don't even it's just like hot Asian communities girls, and everything whatever like like, yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. don't they don't know or care who she is this she's just a girl that is attractive mm -hmm. um and it's it, it sucks because you get this um you know i i, I sat there feeling like doubly pressured because i'm like well i'm a foreigner and i'm a man so mm. like what are, what are they thinking of and me you've like i've been way before this happened to like a bunch of oh yeah yeah and... like i i I've, i know the, i've seen i haven't i've tried unsuccessfully to make small talk with them before <laughs> but um they 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 should at least recognize me and know that i've been there for a long time and i'm not just some fucking guy riding the the bandwagon who, who wanted to come and 
stare or whatever. I don't know what people do. Um, so, like, on the one hand, I, I get the the feeling, but I think people do take it too far because mm. not not every man, regardless of his age, is a fan of K-pop groups or girl, girl groups just because he thinks the members are attractive. Um, or yeah, that for, he wants for, to marry them. For C9, it's uh, probably going to have, like, the opposite effect in that sense. It sounds almost like they want to, like, gatekeep the fandom because of because of the, that the fans do yeah. that's what i'm saying i'm but, saying yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's had almost the opposite effect of what the company wanted where in, in now a sense the fans want to gatekeep the yeah, fandom which yeah. is never really a good thing in no music it's where you not, want to it's be popular long-term growth yeah um and i know that i know that core of fans is really passionate about the group i know that because i am as well but I do also understand that it's a business and um, Signature Art, C9's only artist that is not profitable. So there's, um, I understand that they're running a business and they want to find ways to get in, get new audiences. And unfortunately, that is a way that you can get a new audience, even if that new audience is not one that is nice, but it is one that is usually quite wealthy. Um, so it's it's awful honestly because obviously the 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 worst of it falls onto the members themselves mm -hmm. um but obviously all we can do is just keep uh <laughs> keep supporting them and showing them our love and make sure that they know that the you know the big fans among us are, are there for them as the people and mm -hmm. i always want it to be up. based on like musical merit and yeah enjoyment of that factor not not the and the, and the, ch the charm of the members as mm -hmm. well of course yeah. but but i do want to 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 say as as a whole like it doesn't mean that um fans have to be wholly asexual when enjoying or listening to k-pop or, or being involved in in k-pop like it's okay to find attractive people attractive you know like that's fine yeah. <laughs> it's just about the way you do you deal with that kind of thing you, there's a difference between like it's about having the uh, proper behavior towards it you yeah know, just like, etiquette yeah. you know like and being people, a, a respectful person about it and, yeah like people can find a famous actress or, or actor very attractive and they don't have to then start commenting stuff under all of their instagram posts about exactly. how you want to yeah, yeah grind on their abs until you're raw <laughs> you know <laughs> or whatever it might be <laughs> i don't know why yeah, that was why what i thought tweet of, episodes yeah, with the Jack yeah. And, and, and that like i feel like that kind of shit is is kind of normalizing passing or crossing a line mm -hmm. or in a way no i agree because i've seen some on there where i'm like whoa that's just like why would you even yeah, like, show them that it's, one it's, like that one's like yeah like, yeah like, and especially for um for k-pop idols who traditionally you know quite sheltered and then they're reading stuff that's way 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 more explicit than you'd get mm. an equivalent of in korean and they're like yo like you can tell some of them they're visibly kind of like obviously the korean americans or whatever it's it's a different vibe like and it's it's undeniably hilarious to put like eric nam through that kind of situation sorry of all eric. the people eric but, is. <laughs> yeah. but but sometimes they're just like yo like calm down you know this is just and like, i think i saw one um uh someone someone trying to get pedro pascal to read one mm. and he and he straight up refused to do it that's and understandable like, I which mean, I, I think it's a good thing you know it's it's a bit it, uncomfortable it's, you know like yeah it's, 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 i think it'd be really uncomfortable imagine reading like graphic really weird graphic things about you and then also that it's encouraging people to act up like that i feel i feel like being overtly sexual and being an explicit has become more and more commonplace uh in general but also among the, the k-pop community in, in recent years um and i think yeah it's just like it's I, it's I okay to if... say you know <laughs> where that if you find that line it's like this it's okay to say oh this member's really hot because like yeah they are they're hot people <laughs> like mm. that's okay like it's okay to say this, this it's hot like you said though hot, when there's like that line yeah. crossed and some of those like cross that threshold yeah. Because it's like it's not like it's not okay to acknowledge it, but there's certainly a proper etiquette to it for sure. Like yeah, yeah. Um, and it just it just sucks that the more and more engaged the idols themselves are with the so with 
social media and with the advances of the more and more of these kinds of things they have to to see you know I think that just happens because it's getting more popular all the time yeah more, it's definitely more a people effect. obviously is going to bring in not always better people <laughs> yeah you'll get more but you people, have not always better people that are like there's like increasing ways in which people can interact with with their idols like the messaging services in which you can send messages the to them and stuff like that bubble yeah and... bubble and from uh more and more groups are opening their own discord servers in which they're in they will oh, occasionally God, discord servers. yeah <laughs> i've i've has their own discord server if you want to go and hang out um talking that, about course, discord servers just issues, just, just like... talking about kind of lines that get crossed um when i've had to join like uh for instance, the Blink one that I had to join, you know, <laughs> you see some people put like some comments in there that are like way too gnarly and should be like moderated out. That's true for like I'd probably any K pop sure. group. I'm not like in general, all groups probably, you know, especially you, Blinks, you degenerate. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there's definitely some things you see commented in there and you're like, that's you like whoa <laughs> whoa that's like yeah, a little too much you should have kept that one to yourself you know <laughs> yeah yeah um, no but that's yeah like with Un, going back to Unbi a little bit because i think it connects to all these cases is like it's unfortunate i understand kind of the viewpoint where you almost have that gatekeeping viewpoint it's like i enjoyed it for the music right before you know why are these these people showing up just to be like I guess you'd call it like slobs. Like, what would you call them? Like, they're just being yeah. like, it's just, yeah. uh, it's like an icky feeling. I guess you get right away when you kind of see certain comments and certain like behavior show up about it. Yeah. It's like, it's, yeah, like salivating over her or just like, mm -hmm. there's yeah. a limit. It's, you can, there's a limit and don't cross that yeah. threshold, you know? Like, yeah. Cause like, there's, it, it's it's completely fine to look at Unbi's Calvin Klein shoot and go, "Holy crap, mm -hmm. that woman is attractive as hell! <laughs> like she's hot as hell." And you know, if there was words are important, I guess is what like, we're saying, right? <laughs> if, if I had to cover myself in gasoline and self-immolate for a chance in heaven with her, then I would do it. <laughs> but like. <laughs> That doesn't mean I'm going to go on her Instagram and start posting absolutely and wild sure, shit, yeah. you know? Yeah. Like, Some things should be kept internally. Yeah. To the and mind. It, and, mm -hmm. and it, yeah, and it, it's really, it is really frustrating because, like, like, for G1, like, obviously, I've known G1 for years. Uh, I've been following her music since, like, day one, basically. Uh, it, incidentally, it was, uh, like, it was Good Days, like, her first group set, uh debut anniversary the other day as well which i congratulated her um but like i just yeah i i hate that she was either people the people knew her either for the smile being the smiley girl and now they know her for being the smiley girl with the <laughs> with the yeah. big, the large chest shall we say like know her for her fucking talent and her charm <laughs> you know like mm. It's, it's right there too sometimes i wonder if us as two men are like the worst people to discuss this <laughs> maybe but, but i think it also it's... gives a viewpoint because we're kind of explaining we, like yeah, we, people we like... that we think it's trash behavior right like yeah. we're, we're acknowledging yeah, yeah, yeah. that they are being trash we, we, like, we like that we like it we like women <laughs> some of us more than others but like we like attractive women and we understand like it's natural to respond in a certain way when you see an attractive person but there's also a way that you need to carry yourself mm. and some of the way that people are talked about online and the way that people encourage others to talk about people online is um it's not okay it and just it needs to stop. sucks <laughs> like, yeah it's because really in the case of both signature and B, they should be popular uh because their music is good for yeah one really good yeah, and then also because the members are uh, charismatic and, and enjoyable, so it's like those things should be why any group is popular in K-pop. I feel like, yeah, um, yeah, and and how high the standard is for both of those things, you know, like, but obviously there are other factors in this world. That yeah, 
and the, the visual the factor is a big thing in especially in korea well they have um, the nation's visual so well exactly uh, and, and that's kind of a good comparison to make isn't it right it's like do i wish that that Soul would be noticed for her angelic singing voice and her like being one of the nicest kindest people you'll ever speak to in your whole life ever uh or do i want her to get noticed because she's ex extraordinarily pretty <laughs> like obviously that i would like the two to happen kind of simultaneously or one to compliment the other but the chances are it's more going to be the latter than the former unfortunately so it is kind of the way it is like uh, you if you want them to succeed but certainly i, I don't want I, I would rather they stay where they are than um have the have the fandom become dominated by gross well see nine certainly screwed up in my opinion not putting the nation's visual in acting i must say um, yet mm. yeah t1 is there's, incidentally there's an endless money tree there that they are not uh taking advantage of you yeah. it's like maybe one day mm. um but I think that, yeah, the way the company is handled, I think, and I think that's the, the, the why the comparison is so apt, right? Is that Wulim have come out and said, you know, don't fucking say all this stuff. It's really gross. And we're going to smack you down if you, if you do. Um, that's the proper response. Yeah. And whereas C9 has said nothing. And f as far as we can tell, is just actively promoting mm. it. In C9's so, case, I think the reason maybe they're worried about saying anything is because they know that they directly are also a part of the problem in this case. Maybe, yeah. But, but they I, still should feel, say something. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like people would not, at least not forgive, but at least kind of understand if they come out and say, yeah, uh, we we took some some actions that we uh regrettable decisions. We, we we regret it um from now on we're gonna do this like i've not ideal but at least it's better than just silence and just going on with things as, as no nothing happened i think like the thing that really pissed people off as well is like they posted the teaser of that show obviously it's not their show but they posted a teaser of it in which like you could see that clip happening and just and the backlash was immediate and large and it felt like no one at C9 took any notice of the all of the comments, whether from Korean fans or international fans. It's one of the rare times that both communities were united in saying, yo, what the fuck? Like, this is not okay. And C9 went, can't wait to tune into the real episode and then posted that without any acknowledgement whatsoever. And it just... Do they just see the engagement and think, yeah, this is what we wanted? Yeah, like, they, it's, it's the bad press is... Yeah. Is any pre any press is good press kind of viewpoint, I guess, is what they're thinking, which is not true in K pop. No. <laughs> I, and yeah. just and 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 putting putting such a sweet person's feelings on the line in order to pursue that is just it's really messed up. Yeah. Um so I hope I hope at least behind the scenes that um people at C9 have, have talked with G1 and, and that she has the means to express her her feelings if you know she wants to it's a weird conflicting situation right you want i like we both want them to be more popular but i you don't want this to be effective and you don't yeah. want it to be for any type of reason like that yeah yeah so it's a really unusual situation because it's like yes want them to be more popular please not yeah. this way not basically. like this yeah, yeah. exactly like and um, I, I it's kind of in a have had a similar a situation like that before but it hasn't obviously had that same exposure in the same way but the way that people treat Sabom in nature for example mm. you have a lot of those same kind of accounts making the same kind of shit about her and i mean <laughs> she wasn't she uh by by trying to interact with fans and like she would always like instagram comments and stuff and she would i that it would uh people would be commenting stuff like you should start an only fans and shit like that and I was asking her for pictures for tributes and things like that. And she would like it or whatever. And that would only incentivize further problems. So mm. she's now, she hasn't been seen for two months now as a result. Uh, well, not as a result of that necessarily, but that's certainly been a thing. Yeah, um, that's been a factor for sure. So it's like, yeah. The, it's, I'm always amazed the audacity of yeah. people online <laughs> like sometimes i see a comment and i'm just like you fully thought it out 
you typed it. Yeah, you thought of all that and typed that out. And, and pressed send. Yeah. Like, it's... This is a good decision. Mm -hmm. My, my like... parents would be proud of me. Exactly. <laughs> like, think about when you type something, what your mom would say if she saw it. <laughs> like, yeah, that's like, it. Like, I feel like there should be a certain metric before you press the send on your on your Twitter comment, your Instagram comment. Yeah. Think about not the in a, anonymity of it, like you're anonymous online, but what it would be viewed like if someone sees you sending it, basically, kind of thing, and yeah. how that would be viewed. Maybe there's people who really just don't care that much, though. Yeah, maybe their their lives are just that empty. Mm -hmm. It's quite possible. Um, on the flip side, I will also say that um, I understand being angry and, uh, and and disgusted by that kind of thing. Um, but even though this is more just a personal thing, uh, it's kind of tough to get when I'm like also outraged about something and I want to share in that outrage with the community that I'm a part of to just see constant... Uh, men should kill themselves you should kill men should all fucking die like mm -hmm. all that shit like i i understand what you're saying i'm not gonna be the whole like fucking not all men bullshit guy but like you know <laughs> sometimes maybe just think target your frustrations a little more uh specifically rather than generally because then mm -hmm. it's like well i, I want to get involved in this and i want to and i feel like i have a I know this is a, the most arrogant, typical man thing to say ever, but I feel like I have quite a unique position to comment on this because of how well I know the member, like on a, you know, essentially on a personal level. Um, and then I feel like I'm being shied away from being able to comment and, and get involved in some things because people are there just spouting like, kill men <laughs> yeah no i get it. you know yeah. i know it might not be that serious but just as a, a personal thing like it's it's an understandable true. response like it's like yeah yeah you see all these dudes being really being awful awful yeah. and annoying on the internet so you're like really yeah. mad about it it's understandable yeah i i get it yeah but um just a, but then a in more, the same case you should you almost in a sense have to trust dudes to keep other dudes all be angry about it as well you know what i mean like to be yeah. just as disgusted as 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 you are about it like a such yeah yeah it's and i feel like i can understand why that's difficult sometimes because you see so much awful behavior online and and then it's like it can be very t very taxing and weary and and especially like when you're because of the way that uh internet algorithms work when you engage with certain types of content like negative content about certain things you will be fed more and more and more of it so it feels like you'll you just nothing in the world is anything except awful negative shit that makes you feel terrible and makes you want to project that outwards but um i mean I'll, at, at the end of the day it comes down to the same thing whether it's the, the gross people making comments or the people angrily responding it's like you know remember that um the, the we're all humans and this <laughs> there are people sometimes you see it online so you see it online a lot i think people sometimes have trouble separating online from real world yeah behavior i've almost never come across the type of behavior i see online in the real no. world <laughs> no I, yeah i always think like, like... I, imagine if imagine if we were just in a circle or, around in a, in a cafe or a bar mm. And you people started talking to each other like they do on Twitter. On like, on like Reddit threads and things like yeah, that. Yeah, or would, wherever. You, could, you would be so shocked. It, you would completely stop what you're doing. And, and like, like... <laughs> humanity would collapse mm. if that was how people talk exactly, to each other. Yeah. <laughs> like, society would crumble as we know it. Maybe that wouldn't be a bad thing. But, uh. <laughs> Just retcon yeah. the whole thing with start over. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Only, uh, only from the ashes can the phoenix rise. Mm. <laughs> but anyway, I think the the main takeaway from all of this is uh, Sun Signature because uh, you haven't heard the the new album yet because we're waiting for uh, yes, for me to I will see it tonight. Us, but... and, uh, I've so, been waiting. Yeah, I've been patient. Yeah, it, uh, I I I think it's the strongest collection of songs to date. Nice, um, and the members do as well. In fact, I think pretty much. Uh, well, Dohi and Selim both agreed that it was their, their favorite 
song on there so many else thought it was her, their, their favorite song she once said she wasn't sure but she thinks it might be her favorite. <laughs> mm. so uh yeah so well yeah see what hopefully you think. uh there's a lot of popularity gained and it's for the right reasons yeah. um it would be nice if the new album takes off and people just enjoy the songs without any yeah. kind of weird undertones to it you know that's the yeah. main thing. I think people just in a fandom want to be able to enjoy the music and the idols without any weird, uncomfortable yeah. undertone. As with anything, is that right? too you much to ask? You know what? Weird. I feel why is it so difficult? <laughs> yeah, why is that so hard? Mm. Why is it? Why is it so difficult? I, I, and the answer to that is because of the internet. That's why it's so difficult. Yeah. Because of humanity and the internet mm. and the way that two things intersect. Yeah. Well, it's, that's sobering note. It's, <laughs> it's true on anything, though. It's not just like, yeah, like really anything. Is. You can go to the comments and you can be like, "Oh, <laughs> you know," just like yeah. as oh, you're scrolling. People through, are terrible. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's well, it's true of any medium that you that you yeah. explore. Like. A- any situation where humans are able to make unregulated, semi-anonymous comments is going to be just awful. <laughs> it's, it's it's like even on sports, like Instagram. I'll be on my oh, message Instagram. You know, sometimes sports. I'm just like. Oh my Where God, did yeah. this come from in the comment section? Like, yeah, how did yeah. you get to this like comment? Look, like, it's it's, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, it really is. I guess there really there's no happy. Uh, is there any there's happy no note happy we can conclude that. things on? No. Um, <laughs> it's, all, uh, it's all sadness. <laughs> well, I what's guess a positive a, thing that happened in K-pop? on a, a happy note for me? Not necessarily on a, for a K-pop perspective, but well, kind of. Uh, but my good friend Ava, for, who you'll obviously know from the from the Discord, from the lives and stuff, is coming to Korea. He gets in tomorrow, so we're going to be flying around. Well, he's well, not he's flying in. We're going to be walking and possibly training and taxiing around, doing all that stuff. Um, I'm taking him to to meet Signature on Sunday. Oh, nice! Uh, he's going to get into a fan meet there. Yeah, he's already in, and we sort of that no problem. Um, on Friday, he's going. He got into a fan sign to meet the god herself, Kim Sejong, which uh, I'm extremely jealous of him. I'm also seeing signature again that day, so I will just be seeing my own god Chase Hall instead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then on Saturday, we're going to go to a we're going to a concert in Incheon. We're going to see uh, oh my girl B two B Triple S, the mothers <laughs> who I've forgotten. But no, I mean, that, a, dude, do you understand? Like, I, we're doing some things. Doing some I, things. I visited. We saw Taeyeon, and like, it's like, dude, we, you're just like playing. Right. You're playing like right. the the yeah. K-pop overlord of tours, like right. <laughs> yeah. So anyone wants to come over here and meet some idols and watch them watch some mm-hmm. concerts, then hit your boy up. That is good news, What's though. Uh, congratulations to Ava. Yeah, he's going to have a wonderful time. I know I did. Thank you for being a wonderful host when i was yeah there. try my best anyone Probably. who visits uh you can hit all the way up it's it's about five grand for two weeks right yeah that's my <laughs> my usual rate mm. seven and a half for the premium service mm, mm, mm. what the premiums is getting into an m countdown right <laughs> <laughs> god <laughs> oh no one want to wish that on anyone no wait in line <laughs> for like seven hours yeah. in the morning yeah, you gotta be here you gotta be here at five in the morning mm-hmm <laughs> All right. Well, that is a positive note. I'm glad we ended that one. This has been the K-pop podcast. I'm Honan. I'm Oliver. And just be a decent person. That's that's all we ask. Yes. Be good to each other. Bye bye. Bye bye.